couch Dogs need adolescents Hey there Lickin' Riffers, how are you doing? Welcome to another awesome lesson right here on Lickin' Riff. In this video, we're gonna start our journey into musical improvisation. Musical improvisation is the one most important and most fun musical skill one can acquire. Even though it seems like a big subject, something really scary that takes years of practice, and it's partly true, it is so much fun that you don't even mind practicing and you don't notice that you're actually doing the work because you're having fun doing it. So the very first principle of improvisation is to actually do it. No amount of teaching, no amount of explanation and examples can teach you how to improvise. You have to sit and do it yourself. Now in the next lessons, I'm gonna give you concrete examples and exercises, but in this video, I wanna talk about the principles. So the the first principle is to actually sit and do it. You can stand up and do it, of course, but you know, just do it. Stop listening to someone explaining, stop the video and try it yourself. I'm talking about the next lessons, of course. The second principle is to listen to whatever you're playing and react to it. For example, if you take frets five and seven on strings three and four and start playing around with them, you'll get something like this. Okay, now what did I do there? I played da 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 and then I listened to it and I decided to react with a different rhythm at the end there. Da 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 da. Okay, and that made it a lick instead of just going on. Okay, I listened to the rhythm as basic as it was and I reacted to it. Now let me give you another example. Okay, just another simple rhythm, but I employed, you know, a slide there, uh, a slight bend there, but I listened to what came out and I reacted with, okay, and then I did it again. And then I changed it a little at the end. It's nothing fancy, but I improvised. I just, you know, utilized my ears and had fun with my guitar for those few seconds. Now, those were, you know, just very small examples, but it's improvising nonetheless. So just sit and try to do it. You don't have to play anything complicated. Listen to what comes out and react to it, and then you'll start building up on it. I'll try to get into it and show you what I mean. Um, you know, it takes a moment to switch from teacher mode to player mode. It's two different parts of the brain, the right side and the left side, the creative side and the logical side, so I'll try. Okay, something like this. I just played a little bit of blues. I was still aware of the camera, so um, I didn't really let myself fly. I was still in teacher mode, but I think it was a really good example. And if you, uh, you know, rerun the example, you'll see that I started with a rhythm and then I kind of played around with the lick, then I complemented it. So we're going to talk about all those techniques, all those, you know, question and answer techniques and how to build a solo. Um, you know, it's all a method. And uh, we're going to talk about this in, you know, subsequent lessons. But you see, I listen and I react. Now let's take another example with chords. Let's take just basic chords. Um, G, D, E minor, and C. So for example. I just started with a simple, a simple finger style pattern, just a really, really, you know, simple pattern. Okay, just playing around with the chord. Okay, the chord itself. And then, you know, on the second chorus, the second round, I started pulling off notes, okay, and adding more notes. And then I started playing around with the notes inside the C chord as well. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. I pulled it off as well, just made a motif out of it. But it wouldn't have happened unless I listened to what came out. If I liked what came out, I'd play it again. If I didn't like it, then I won't. I'll try something different. Okay, but again, back to the first principle, I actually dared to go on and try it. So the third the third principle, the third ground rule of improvisation is to use what you know. For example, I gave you two frets, five and seven, on two strings, three and four. Okay, only these four notes, and I played around with them. I played it before, and I played this before, and I slid before, and I bent notes before, so I just used what I know. If you don't know how to do it, either you know, take a chance on it or just play what you know and then let yourself take more chances as you get used to it. And about the chords, G, D, E minor and C. I know these four chords, you know these four chords, you can start improvising on them. Let's take a completely different rhythm, but again, same chords. What did I do here? I just decided to play blocks and see what I get. So I played a rhythm using my thumb and the three fingers for the whole block chord. So I played something like this, okay? Bass and chord, and then using the D chord, the next chord, I complemented it with a different rhythm. And you can go on. Now, uh, as you can see, you can take what you know and try something you've never tried before. A new rhythm, a new fingerstyle pattern you don't know, a new pull off or slide, or, you know, vibrating the whole chord even. And then see what comes out. You know, just take a chance. The fourth ground rule is to listen to as much music as you possibly can, even musical styles you don't think you like. It all, it's all a matter of getting used to something. If you don't like, let's say, if you don't like pop, then you can listen to pop anyway because it has some really interesting grooves and really interesting rhythms and you can always learn from something even if you don't like it. If you don't like heavy metal, you can still learn a lot from heavy metal, uh, both harmonically, melodically, and rhythmically. You can learn from any type of music. Listen to African music, listen to Irish music, listen to Indian music. Everything you listen to will end up in your improvisation. We'll get into it in uh, another lesson, but remember this one, it's really, really important. The more music you listen to, the more diversified the music you listen to, the better musician you get. Period. Um, the fifth principle is to have confidence in your own playing. Okay, now this is a difficult subject and we'll devote a whole lesson to being confident and, you know, being confident as an artist, as a musician, musician, as a musician, but as long as you have confidence, whatever you play will sound good. Okay, and let me add the next principle to it and I'll show you some examples of it. There is no such thing as a mistake in music. No such thing. If you're playing a wrong note, it's just a mode. And we're going to discuss modes in a different lesson. But a mode is a scale, which is not exactly a minor or a major scale. It's either a minor or a major scale, but with one note out of its place or more than one note out of its place. Uh, for example, in Arabic scales, you can, uh, you can see it as a minor scale with many, many notes not in their right places, but they are in their right places because we're not discussing minor or major scales, we're discussing Arabic scale. Okay, and we're gonna discuss scales and we're gonna learn, you know, everything I can teach you, I will. Um, so uh, let me show you a really good example of this. Um, the E minor scale. Okay. Okay, now let's take each note and get it, you know, pull it sideways for the wrong note. Okay. have the freaking note here 
Okay, this is the major third instead of the minor. Okay, let's take the fifth. Okay, it's the flat five. It, it's in the Locrian. It's a diminished sort of sound. As long as I have confidence in my playing, it doesn't sound like a mistake, right? Now let's use all those wrong notes and you'll see that they're very, very right. Okay, now that last one was a bit of a stretch, but... Okay, sounds a little bit whole tone. Um, let's go back to the minor scale and move these ones. Okay, minor so far. It's an interesting sound, right? And let's move the last one. See? I even used the chromatic here, a chromatic move, and it sounded fine because I was trying to build a lick and I didn't let the wrong note idea interfere with my, you know, with my endeavors. So as you can see, there is no such thing as a wrong note as long as you have confidence in your playing. I'll try to give you another example involving all of them. jumbled up but you see what I mean I was trying to make it sound awkward on purpose uh, but you know the the whole idea is that you just take one wrong note at a time one mode at a time one slight difference at a time to add more color and we're gonna discuss that but I just wanted you to see and hear for yourself that when you have confidence in your playing and you let the mistakes go by it actually sounds pretty good and um, now we get to our final principle which is forget about everything and everyone else and just play. Don't bother yourself with what other people will think, what other guitar players will think, what your family will think, what your friends will think, what the audience will think. Just have fun with your guitar and as long as you have fun with your guitar and your music, the audience or whomever is listening to you at the moment or not listening but hears you through the, uh, you know, through the door or through the wall, uh, will enjoy it. They'll actually enjoy it. And if you constantly think about what people think about your playing, you're just putting obstacles in your own way because the most important thing is to make music and you shouldn't care what anybody else thinks about your music as long as you like it. If you like it, you'll be confident in your playing and you'll play great things. So I'll see you in the next lesson. These are the principles, the ground rules for improvisation. And in the next lesson, we're going to start improvising. So uh, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next lesson. Bye for now.